Sherlock Holmes, the great consulting detective, is a character that was devised by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, first appearing in print in 1887's A Study in Scarlet. The character gained popularity over the years for his incredible deduction skills, and along with his friend Dr. John Watson, starred in literary adventures such as The Hound of the Baskervilles and The Sign of the Four, and screen adaptations based on the characters are still being produced to this day. Developers Frogwares have themselves created a number of stories through the medium of video games and one of these, Crimes and Punishments, which first released back in 2014, is now about to release on the Nintendo Switch. Does it show its deductive nous or should it go back to elementary school? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to the publishing team for the review code and now let's find out. In terms of story, Crimes and Punishments brings together six cases for Holmes to investigate with the occasional help of Dr. Watson. Some of these are direct adaptations of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's stories, such as the first case, The Fate of Black Peter. Alongside Holmes and Watson, you'll find other familiar characters from the source material make an appearance, such as Inspector Lestrade, and locations such as Holmes' residence, 221B Baker Street, as well as other areas of Victorian London also feature. The six stories are standalone but they do tie into an overarching tale and there are a number of different endings for each case depending on your choices as we'll touch on a bit later. In terms of gameplay, generally each case starts with a cutscene which sets the story before you are taken to the scene of the crime. From here you must survey the area looking for clues and points of interest as well as interviewing any potential witnesses. You can play using either a first or third person view, although I played exclusively in the third person, and over the course of your investigation, new locations will become available to search and potentially find more clues. You'll be able to move freely between these locations via your map and will need to do this in order to advance the story. For example, you may need to return to Baker Street in order to research names or dates in your archive section or visit Scotland Yard to question any suspects that have been detained or study any of the belongings taken from said suspects. When meeting someone for the first time, pressing X will allow Sherlock to assess the physical features of the person, taking in clues related to their dress or appearance to deduce the type of person they are and use this to his advantage when questioning them. Questioning usually equates to making a statement from a list and then attempting to query any response you get that does not ring true by choosing something from a list of the evidence you have so far acquired that contradicts their claim. You will encounter puzzles at times which range from fairly simple attempts to pick locks for example to some that are a bit more involved and require you to use Holmes' analysis table back at Baker Street. Some of these take a bit more thought and whilst I did feel that at times the wording of some of these tasks was a little obtuse, I did enjoy these puzzles and how they got you thinking, something very much appreciated considering the source material. Holmes has a few tricks to assist him in his investigations and the first of these is his Sherlock talent. By pressing R at a location, a sixth sense ability will kick in that will notice anything untoward at the scene. You can then examine these areas for vital clues that will assist you. Your journal displays any evidence you have as well as character profiles, but the evidence page will show anything that has not been used to its fullest potential, so it's always a good idea to check this page if you feel a little stuck. There is also the deduction space which appears each time you find a new clue and is accessed by pressing Y. Linking one piece of evidence to another to create a factual statement will generally lead to unlocking a new course of action, be it to speak to a suspect again, conduct some sort of experiment or visit a new location. Sometimes this will lead to having to make a choice when there isn't sufficient evidence to confirm a suspect's means or motive. This will shape your web of evidence and you may need to revise some of your deductions if things do not appear to add up as the investigation deepens. Ultimately, the shape of this web will lead to who you accuse of the crime. If you do not agree with the outcome, you can continue to look for further evidence until you are ready to bring the case to a close and make your accusation. You will be given a summary of your findings and you can check whether you did indeed accuse the correct person on this screen or if you'd rather not know, you can keep this hidden and try the case again to find other outcomes and different endings. 
I did feel that each case was a little rushed by the end, especially if a suspect was added into the story late on, with a jump to a conclusion feeling a bit arbitrary on these characters. It didn't feel as if the due diligence carried out on the other suspects took place on these later characters, and to be fair sometimes this may have been down to following the original story, but as a game I feel it would have been better to give the same care and attention to each suspect, as those who have never read Sherlock Holmes stories before may find the sudden jump to be a little jarring. Fans of the original work, so I will no doubt appreciate how faithful these segments stay. Another negative I had were the occasional minigames. You would encounter these from time to time, and I mentioned earlier how I felt the puzzles in these games were handled very well, while well, unfortunately the same cannot be said for these. Basically at certain points you may need to partake in an activity and pass it in order to advance the story, such as the arm wrestling match that I am showing you here. But owing to poor wording in the instructions and just poor design in general, these sections are much more frustrating than they are fun, to the point where I'd rather arm wrestle this fella in real life than have to play the minigame again. You can skip these with no consequence, I think it would have cost you an achievement in other versions of the game, but that doesn't really apply to the Switch, and as much as I didn't as it was a review, I would happily do so if I played again, just to get back to the parts of the game that are more fun. On the whole, gameplay is very enjoyable, as long as you like mystery games of course, the source material is stuck too closely, and I liked the puzzles and the overall narrative. A few poor minigames hurt the pacing of the game, but even so, gameplay gets 17 out of 20. Controls work pretty well, most of the shortcuts are displayed on screen, and when needed, navigating your journal is simple and fuss free. The actual movement of your character does feel a little clunky at times, but on the whole, they were okay and they score 14 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, despite the game originally releasing back in 2014, it actually holds up pretty well. The character models in particular are of a good standard, and the variety in locations between cases really does help to keep the game feeling fresh. From the exotic surroundings of Kew Gardens, to the dingy setting of a backwater pub, or Evesham train station circa 1894, the world built is definitely an interesting one, and I looked forward to each new location and case. There are some technical flaws, dropped frames were present at times, and assets and textures were late to load in, which always breaks the immersion, but on the whole, I felt the title belied its age to an extent. The load times when going between locations were a little too long, and if moving frequently, it can become a bit tedious, although I will give credit where it's due in that this screen is hidden with a clip of Holmes travelling to his next location, whilst reading a copy of Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, a clever nod to the title of this game, and a lot better to look at than a blank screen. In terms of the audio, well again, it is quite impressive. I will say now that as an Englishman, and a Londoner in particular, any game set in London generally suffers terribly when trying to give a good account of the London accent, especially period pieces such as these, where all the kids end up sounding like the artful dodger from Oliver. Crimes and Punishment actually navigates this minefield pretty well. Holmes sounds great and the part is very well written. He has that eccentric and sometimes moody element to his character, and his interactions with Watson make for some very humorous exchanges. Do you want to slit some more pig's throats? No. Well, thank goodness for that. I wish to impale one with a harpoon. Wonderful. Some don't fare quite as well, Lestrade for example is serviceable but not quite on par, and some of the background NPCs repeat lines a bit too often, but again on the whole, it's pretty impressive. Music is used sparingly, perhaps a little too sparingly at times, but the voice acting makes up for this for the most part. Visuals do show their age to an extent, but I felt that on the whole, they set the scene well and offered a good amount of variety. They get 15 out of 20. Audio really does support the package, with the voice acting in particular being a strong point, and it gets 17 out of 20. Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments cost £25.99, and regional equivalents are on your screen now. There is currently 10% off this price until the 10th of February, and this can be extended to 25% off if you own The Sinking City, another of Frogware's titles on the Switch. I felt that in terms of the amount of content, six cases, each taking about two hours, but with those extra endings to aim for, the asking price isn't unfair, plus similar sort of games on the Switch, such as the two Poirot games, are a fair bit more expensive. My issue with the price is that the game is 8 years old by this point, and I bought the re-release back in 2019 on the PS4 physically for about £10. It doesn't detract from the quality of the game, but anywhere between the £15 to £20 mark would have made it a much easier recommendation. Value scores 12 out of 20. 
quick. Fetch a lantern. To conclude, Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments is a good mystery game which stays faithful to its source material and uses it well in terms of characterization and story. The puzzles are mostly simple, with a few getting the brain working, and the general investigating follows a logical path for the vast majority of the time. A few weak mini-games sour things a tad, plus there are times where some story aspects feel a bit rushed, although I do think this is more down to certain parts of the original stories not translating as well into the video game format. Plus there is that price that will be a sticking point for anyone who has played the games before. But if you are a fan of the character or just mystery games in general, the decision to pick this one up is, well, elementary. Still unclear as to what connects him with the murder. It is time to ask him. Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments gets a switch up score of 75%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming. You almost killed me. Nonsense, I was aiming for the vases. Blindfolded? Watson, quiet please, I'm trying to concentrate. Ah, Lestrade. What is it this time? They can see me. Well, here it is, and it's a good one, Mr. Holmes. A gentleman by the name of Peter Carey, also known as Black Peter, has been murdered. A sailor, most probably. What happened here? Oh, Mr. Holmes, how could you? It's the only exercise I've had all week. A grateful client from Limoges sent me a vase collection this morning. I couldn't think of a better use for it. You're out of your mind. I missed four out of ten.